Hakim Ziyech cost £36 million. Guys, let that sink in. £36 million British pounds for this absolute magician. What's going on people? Welcome back to my personal channel. Welcome back to your official review for Chelsea 4, Sheffield United 1. It is our fourth win in a row. It is our eighth game unbeaten in a row. And guys, I only say I'm saying this quietly, but there is a potential title charge happening. It all depends on form. It all depends on everything like that. So I'm not going to talk too much on it. But if we continue to play the way that we are playing that, this is a completely different Chelsea side to last season and this is the most confident I've ever felt in a Chelsea side in ages. It was an amazing performance. Bit of an iffy start with us going 1-0 down but it was always going to be interesting to see how Chelsea reacted to going 1-0 down because that would be a completely different scenario to seeing this new Frank, Frank Lampard Chelsea side be in and the response was excellent. We're going to delve into it in this match review. We're also going to go for our player ratings as well before we wrap up the video. But as usual, hit that like button, smash that subscribe button and press that bell notification button as well to be the first guy to know whenever we release any new content and let's go straight into this review because there's a lot to talk about. Right, so the lineup came out and there wasn't really anything too wrong with this lineup either. It was the same goalkeeper, same back four as usual. Frank Lampard really trying to maintain now that this is his starting back four and the starting goalkeeper as well, but that position really just fills itself at this point. Only real changes was that Mateo Kovacic came into the squad at centre mid with Kai Havertz out due to self-isolating for the next two weeks. And other than that, it was the same squad. And Golo Kante played in the lone DM role. We had Mason Mount as a supporting number eight as well. Ziyech, Tammy Abraham and Timo Werner started the match and we knew with Sheffield United it was going to be the same sort of game with Burnley where the more they get into the game the more confident they would be and we'd need an early goal to really try and end this match and what happened was they ended up getting the early goal. It was uncharacteristic error from N'Golo Kante. I, I do say this is also why I say I don't think N'Golo Kante makes a perfect lone DM. It's because he always has that need to chase the ball and it comes at a huge strength when he's in a boxer box role and he's just roaming around breaking up play. But he's, when he's in a place where he needs to sit and he needs to maintain his position, sometimes the urge to chase the ball is just too much for him. And this, this build-up to the first goal is a huge example of it. Kante and Hakim Ziyech both trying to mark the runners on the far side of the pitch. Kante chases the ball and leaves the space in, behind him massively exposed for one of the Sheffield United players to make a run in, in behind. Because of that, Mateo Kovacic has to come in forward and he has to leave his marker to try and intercept the ball in. It gets played back to the player that he was originally marking who gets the assist for Sheffield United for the first goal. All because N'Golo Kante was chasing the ball. Now, other than that, he had an excellent performance. And I'm not going to use that as an excuse to slate him. I say in every video where I criticise N'Golo Kante that I think he is a world-class box-to-box winner because that is his best position. That's where he won the league with Leicester and Chelsea in. And the only club that really plays him in a natural in a lone DM role is, is France. And they usually play him with a supporting DM next to him as well. Other than that though, I thought N'Golo Kante had an excellent performance and I've always, and I already said in previous videos that I thought that this was the sort of game to play Kante in that lone DM role because Sheffield United were just going to drop back through the most of the game, especially after they went 1-0 one one down, I mean 1-0 up and they ended up dropping 20 or 30 yards even further forward back because they got what they came for, they got that goal and that was all that they really needed which pushed the game further and further into Kante's strength and one other thing that I do want to talk about as well is our response and this is the huge change up between the Chelsea from last season to Chelsea from this season. You already know how many times we struggled last season against the teams in the lower half of the league or the teams that would sit deep against us and try and play a low block or a physical side. We'd struggle with them so many times. If this was the same game last season and we went 1-0 down early, we were going to we were going to lose the game 1-0. We weren't going to get a goal back because the attack wasn't nearly this, as good as it is right now. The midfield wasn't, well, it was the only real strong point of the team. But at the same point with the defence, the midfield just have a lot of pressure trying to sort out the attack and sort out the defence as well. But our response was amazing. We didn't collapse. 
We continued with our game plan. We just stuck to trying to break them down and it worked. And who was behind the first goal? As always, the wizard of West London himself, Hakim Ziyech. Brilliant ball in towards the box for Mateo Kovacic to latch onto. And Mateo Kovacic himself got a great assist for Tammy Abraham. Tammy Abraham as well, who's creating serious problems for team selection right now. That is another goal involvement for him. And I thought his, his movement around the box all game was amazing. He was constantly creating problems for that Sheffield United defence. His hold, his hold up play has improved tenfold since he first joined Chelsea. I remember the first few months of the season, he was getting bullied in the air and getting bullied by other defenders and now he's fighting back and he's showing his strength as well i remember the sheffield united game back in august Shef um, tammy abraham got two goals of two sheffield united mistakes but he still struggled in terms of hold up play and linking up the ball and now it's a completely different beast he's getting the ball and he's creating chances for other players his movement around the box around the box is excellent and he's creating space for other players as well. And it was another brilliant performance for him. And Hakim Ziyech, while we're on it as well, he is the Moroccan magician for a reason. And I can't believe, after years of seeing William crosses, we have now upgraded to Hakim Ziyech crosses. I've already said this at the start of the video, but I can't believe we got this guy for only £36 million. Pounds. I mean, Marine is a magician, enough as it is. But to do this one as well, Hakim Ziyech... We were worried about tr trying to replace Eden Hazard. It kind of looks like we've done it again with, with Hakim Ziyech because the way he moves with that ball, every single time he gets the ball, he creates a problem. And I think that was that was either his second or his third, third assist in three games for Chelsea today. It was a ridiculous performance from him. Second goal, another another amazing delivery from Hakim Ziyech. And the thing about him is every time he releases one of those balls, it finds a dangerous part of the field. And this one was perfect. I mean, it was a lucky touch from Ben Chilwell to put into the net. It was a very tight angle for him to try and get a finish in from. And it was just a touch into the net. But again, it was the delivery from Hakim Ziyech that puts it into those dangerous positions. We've seen so many bummy crosses throughout the years from the likes of Willian and Marcus Alonso. And now the finishing has just increased tenfold. And I don't, I don't want to just talk about him. I will talk about other players across the field as well. Mason Mount, I thought he had amazing passing and work rate again today. Mateo Kovacic was amazing offensively and he could have had two goals today. Something that you don't usually say about Mateo Kovacic. And one of the issues of him being his goal output and stuff like that, it's good to see him starting to go forward and to try and have more of an impact going forward as well. So I thought it was an excellent performance from him. Thiago Silva as well, he might as well just be another deep line playmaker with the level of passing that we have from the back now. He is utterly ridiculous with those passes. Between him, Hakim Ziyech, Jorginho when he's on the field as well are passing with some liquid football at times. The third goal came from Thiago Silva which was yet another Hakim Ziyech assist. When I saw him step up to take that free kick, I can't lie, I had shades of Chelsea beat Ajax because it was in the complete same angle. It did, did it look like it was going in? I don't I don't think it looked like it was fully going in, but Thiago Silva still got the final flick on that to make it 3-1. And at that point, the game looked like it was dead. Jorginho had also been brought on for Kovacic, who was, coming off of an, who was coming off of a little niggle as well. But I think it was the right time to bring Jorginho on as well, because that's a perfect role for him right now, to bring him on just to kill off games in the last 20 minutes, maintain possession in Chelsea's end, even though we were dominating it for long periods, but just to stop the game from turning around. And he had a couple good passes as well, couple good chances to create assists or passes behind the assist but I thought he had a good performance as well and then Timo Werner got his goal to make it 4-1 it was a bit of a quiet performance from him I will say that but the fact is he managed to get a goal and to be honest it was kind of played to him because from what it looked like it was a Kante rebound tackle that hit one of the Sheffield United players and bounced perfectly in the right position for Timo Werner to smash it in for 4-1. But you got to just take your chances when they come on the plate to you. And I know I love Timo Werner. He's one of the best finishers in the world. But same way, I don't know how good his conversion rate was last season. The guy had hella chances on the plate. Still put bare of them on the back of the plate as well. But it was great to see him finish this one as well to make it 4-1. That was his last appearance for the team as well. He came off for Olivier Drude for the final few minutes of the game. But other than that, the game was already dead, buried and sorted by that point. It was a great managed game from Chelsea. It was also good for us to keep our heads on after going 1-0 down. Sign of champions, but we're going to say it quietly because it is still a very open title race. We'll roll through the player reigns very quickly before I end this video. I'll start with Edouard Mendy. Most of his job was just catching crosses. I don't think Sheffield United had many big big chances to deal with but he still had a good performance so I'm going to give him a 7. Reese James, 
absolute tank on that right hand side. That guy was just ragdolling players for fun. On that right hand side as well, the link up with Hakim Ziyech we've spoken about so many times. It was absolute filth. Amazing performance from him today. He gets a 7 from me. Thiago Silva got his first goal for Chelsea today. I already spoke about how great his passing was from deep and I thought he was excellent today as well. So he's going to get another 7 as well. Zuma. Um, not as involved as Thiago Silva, but it was also another good performance, so I'm not going to talk too much on it. I will lower it to a 6. I think Thiago Silva's the better of the two today, but it was a good performance from him as well, so I'm just going to leave it as a 6. Ben Chilwell as well, amazing offensively and defensively. That link up with Timo Werner on the left-hand side was working wonders yet again, and he got a goal as well to, to completely end the match. And he could have had a second as well towards half-time. So 7s all around the back four. Uh, Mateo Kovacic could have got two goals. I thought he was in the right spaces and finding the right passes a lot throughout the match, so I'm going to give him an eight. Um, and Golo Kante, I blame him for the first goal, but other than that, I thought he had a great performance as well, so I'm just going to leave it as a seven. Mason Mount as well, great work rate, great passing defensively and off offensively as well. So I'll go, I'll go for a seven as well. He gets a seven too. Hakim Ziyech man of the match by a mile. The guy is 9.5. I'm going to give him a 9.5. I'm holding on those 10 ratings because I want to be really special with those ratings. But he's going to get a 9.5 for me. Another excellent performance. Now, I can't lie. So I was thinking about who I was going to be getting on the back of my home shirt. Because I do need to get that home shirt soon. Hakim Ziyech is sorted now. There was plenty of options for me. But the guy is just balling on a mad one. And I swear down, he makes football look so sexy at times. So yeah, Hakim Ziyech, nine and a half for me. Tammy Abraham was just causing problems all throughout that back line, all game. Um, amazing first goal as well because I like the build up to him. I like the way he dropped a bit further deep to find more space for himself. So I'm going to give him an 8. Timo Werner had the goal, but other than that, it was a bit of a quiet performance from him. I will lower it to just a 6, but he got the goal. So even to score in bad games, that's good for me. So good performance. Moving on to subs. Giroud didn't really have enough time to do anything. Uh, Jorginho as well just brought on to slow the game down. But I thought he was alright, so I'll give him a 6. And yeah, we only had two subs. So yeah, that is it. But guys, that is the end of our player ratings slash review for Chelsea for Sheffield United 1. Here comes the dreaded international break where I just sit here just like, what the hell am I going to film today? So guys, help me out. If there's any sorts of content that you guys want to see, let me know down in the comment section below. But other than that, don't forget to like and subscribe to Carefree Lewis G. Take care and up the Chels. We could be on a title race. Say it quietly, but we could be. But we'll see after the international break. Newcastle comes and then it's Spurs at home. So we'll see you guys then. Take care. Up the Chels.